what is up you guys and of course always welcome back to another episode of who was really better and this time we're gonna cover Sarah Aura versus Electavar and straight off the bat worth noting Electavar has probably one of the most interesting histories of any Pokemon whatsoever since Electabuzz as a first stage Pokemon was a really cool Pokemon throughout generation 1 to 3 fell absolutely behind generation 3 got the evolution of Electivire which was slower but physically more scarier and, and also really weaker on the special side but it kind of weighed it out anyway and it was a really strong OU Poke of generation 4 um, in the Weather War in generation 5 it fell really hard behind again mainly because it didn't it wasn't that adjustable for weather as a whole and it just wasn't viable there and generation 6 it fell all the way to NU even though Assault Vessel's thing and Electivire quite frankly had the necessary means to be very viable there and it kept falling today it is I do believe an untiered Pokemon even though it has a viability in PU it is absolutely behind and Serora is staying in UU it's a Pokemon that was while having a really good morality and stat distribution fell behind from the OU and has mainly to do with that physical electric as a whole has a limitation uh, when it comes to the meta that are uh, represented today that said their league viability are much different which is why we're going to focus on that because TOI's Sarah Aura's um, mixed pool today is better than Electivirus but in a league aspect these things while being promoted as a good thing there are aspects to consider and here's where Electivirus starts to shine there are a lot of things to cover so I just want to have this start of the bat because people are of course saying of course Sarah Aura is better but it's not the simple in league and I really want to cover their strengths in league I do believe those aspects are much more important than a predetermined smog and tier wise viability so with that said I'm gonna cover Electivirus first we'll introduce first and see how it pans out in today's meta so cover the electric type real quick we have electivire here before actually and it was versus luxray and one significantly by that it was clearly better in so many areas but electric is a really fair defensive typing um <clears throat> it has only one weakness and it's very easy to cover up and that is ground where we electric flying steel flying and steel are very few times that actually resist that so it's a key resistant and um yeah just overall, um, electric type usually tend to be really good combination typing due to having so few issues as a whole and actually are relieving some Pokemon of their potential issues. Water electric, for example, is a really strong typing mainly because it really has very few issues, if any. Um, Static Bridge on Electivar is quite interesting. And we have 70 HP. 123 in attack that's that's really high uh, for any Pokemon that's really high it's Bishop level high uh, 76 or 67 turn one run in its defense so not necessarily a bulky 95 special attack is fair 85 special defense also they're fair and the speed there is 95 which it's average at best but it is slow for an electric type and uh, the ones are significantly better than Electivire defensively are also slower and they are the ones that Rotom for example um, Electivar isn't defensively active as potentially Rotom or even Electros but it's not super slow but it means that it's more of a wall breaker than a potential sweeper and um, it works against it at times as stated before generation 6 related with a lot of salt vest which gave it some depth with how it can use itself and it actually is a fair Assault Vest user, but Scarf is usually a common thing too. And um, overall, Static Bridge is really good. It definitely hurts. Uh, that mixed move pool is scary when you combine it to this move pool that we're going to cover real soon. When it comes to its abilities, we have Motor Drive and Vital Spirit. Vital Spirit, of course, make sure you can't get slept on or be put to sleep. So, real works in ways well. Uh, the Motor Drive is clearly better, mainly because if you hit by Electric type, not only do you have um, an auto immunity in the electric type moves as that for potentially stop volt switching you also get yourself boost in speed by one and consider that you are in theory quite slow that's a massive kind of strength to kind of gather and makes electric are quite tough to prep for and it also means it pairs well extremely well with pokemon such as yardos due to this very reason alone but when we start talking about the move pool here's where electric are kind of shines because electric are um has a really broad move pool it's not clefable nidoking king levels but this is something else this is not your average electric type as it is a 
broad boot pool to cover a lot of tracks so that were both physical and special and uh, while it's physically more scary I wouldn't say that its special pool allows it to be lackluster. It is just as scary there, even though it's the core are 30 points apart. So, go to the moon pool, we have Barn Slam, Brick Break, Cross Shop, Detect, Discharge, Double Edge, Earthquake. Earthquake for one here, really significant as it is one of the few electric types that can use electric or Earthquake. It's not like Stunfist that gets it, but can't use it. This is, this is a hard hitting Earthquake. It is extreme in so many ways. Facade needs to be mentioned due to potential ability of being burned. Fire Punch, Flame Thrower, Focus Blast, Ice Punch, huge, huge here too. Light Screen, Low Kick, Power Punch, Protect, Side Kick, Quick Attack, Reflect, Rock Slide, Sismic Stars, Signal Bean, Taunt, Thunderbolt, Thunder Punch, Thunder Wave, Toxic, Vault Switch, Wild Charge, Dual Chop, Dynamic Punch, Counter, Curse, Barrier, Bide, don't know why I included that, <laughs> Bulldoze, Electric Terrain, Electro Ball, Electro Web, and Jaw, Stomping Tantrum, which, just gonna cover that real quick, I've seen people use Stomping Tantrum with Electivire, mainly because if you have immunity to Thunderbolt, Stomping Tantrum is double the power, and that could be very scary fast. There was a mission of Swagger for some reason to fill this page up. Quite frankly, the move pool on Electivar is extremely good. Um, special pool is viable, maybe not as scary. Uh, usually carry hidden power ice, for example, to kind of cover potential matchups as you do want to hit ground for super effective damage. Um, but usually Discharge or Thunderbolt or Flamethrower are covering a lot of stuff. Uh, to say the least, be able to hit grass side, which usually are a fair... Uh, check or even counter to some electric type is huge to get with of course this physical move pool which is really scary mainly because it gets both fire and ice punch this means there are no necessarily strong switching towards electric fire um, the combination of electric to get with ice and fire cover just about everything um, quick attack is great for potential uh, um, priority getting used to the likes of reflect and light screen makes you a great screener uh, so there are depth to this Pokemon. The only thing holding it back is somewhat of a weak defensive uh, or defensive as a whole, as it isn't necessarily that bulky. And it's forced to take attack at times. Um, but as Salt has uh, said, it's going to get a special mention here, as it works super well with counter. Um, mainly because it's bulky enough to force another attack on you, and if you go for a physical, that could backfire. And also, Trick Room set with Curse. Um, not that common, but it's very workable and really scary to fend off properly. Uh, but as a whole, Electivar has flaws. Those flaws are definitely born with its somewhat low speed and not necessarily that high of a bulk. But its move pull together with a fair offensive stat distribution makes it a very dangerous threat to Lee aspect. And uh, it's hard to prep for because it can just do so many roles very well. Uh, it is not a defensive Pokemon, as stated, but it is a really, really strong wall breaker and a, one of the rare traits where it's a physical electric wall breaker, which makes Electivar one of the scariest Pokemon to fend off in a Lee aspect. So that said, how does it compare to Seraora? So when we talk about Seraora and its potential stat distribution, there are a few things to keep in mind. It is, in theory, as bulky as Electivar. Um, first and foremost, 88 HP are definitely more. 75 in its defense are definitely more. 80, 80 in its special defense are less. But considered the high HP, I would say it's just as bulky on the special defensive side. So, in theory, Seora has a bit more um, defensive distribution to kind of cover and take hits better. When it comes to its attack and special attack, it is definitely less strong in its physical prowess. 112 is not a 123, but it has more special attack while not significantly more. It still is an aspect to keep in mind. It does hit a slightly harder in special attack, and that's always something to keep in mind. Though it is most significant, or it is most focused on as um, physical attacker, and it has mainly to do with what it learns. It all has one ability, and I would say it's quite a viable one at that. It's Volt Absorb. It does pretty much what Motor Drive does to um, um, Electivar. It doesn't boost your speed. You get 25 of your HP back, and uh, Considering this Pokemon has a little bit more bulk into it, this could be very scary to deal with. Much like Electivar, it has an Assault Vest set. 
It can be used for any other reason too, but the Assault Vest variant of this is quite scary. It also due to this extra bulk work really well with Chukaberry, uh, and that should definitely have a special mention here, more so in a league aspect. Just as a whole, Sarah Aura is quite ferocious stat distribution wise, but where it kind of fails in aspect is its move pool. We're gonna cover that, of course, as always. Because while I would say Electivar had a really broad and interesting move pool, Sarah Aura hasn't had that luxury of an extra few generations, or this, I would say, four generation of moves that could be transferred. Um, Sarah lacks that, and it's super unfortunate. However, things it learns, it does well, and it really should be having a real focus here. First of all, so acrobatics, brick break, two ways of setting up and bulk up and call might, close combat, discharge, drain punch, never, facade, focus punch, frustration, grass nod. <clears throat> Relevant in the powers, horn claw, knock off, low kick, substitute, super power, taunt, thunderbolt, thunder punch, and thunder wave, toxic, volt switch, wild charge, low sweep, quick guard, round scratch, I don't know why I got that, uh, shockwave, Dear lord, why did I not take this away? Uh, we have Snarl, Snatch, Snore, Throat Shop, Thunder, Work Up, Outrage, Plasma Fist, The Move, Quick Attack, Facade, or Fake Out, um, Power Punch, and Focus Blast. So yeah, there are a few things lacking. We're gonna cover the things that matter, however. Plasma Fist, the best physical electric attack in the game so far that has distributed to a Pokemon of relevant stab. Um, <clears throat> things here, sure, Curem gets Fusion Bolt, that's alright. Victini get a Bolt Strike and Fusion Bolt, relevant. But Plasma Fist, 100 base power, no real drawback, no like wild charge where you get. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, where you get recall of one with you, you actually can spam flas Plasma Fist and it will be. you will be just fine. And consider it's hot attack and high base power here. Yeah, this is a very spammable move without really re any real drawback. If anything, it only the things that happen when you get hit by a plasma fist is that your normal moves are now electric, which also could mean that you're now getting recovery by normal stab against you. So, as a whole, this is a very strong move. It makes a Pokemon really, really, really dangerous. Um, then, much like Electro, a quick attack, which is awesome, but we also have a layer of depth here with Brain Punch, Super Power, and Close Combat, which really help this Pokemon's viability as it does give it another means to deal with the likes of Steel Times better. Um, Fire Punch covered that to an extent, but Close Combat is of course by far better. The only thing it cannot lack, which is definitely something working against it, and that is Ice Punch. Um, not having an Ice, even on the special or physical side, means that it has a layer where it is. Ground matchup just wins versus it, unless you get hit on Power Ice. It usually forces it to be special too, and the special move pool wasn't necessarily all a great either. Thunderbolt, Grass Knot, they are well good coverage. It is the same kind of reason Raichu is kind of good coverage. It's just, it's not there. Um, special side is not as usable, but the Volt Switch is also an aspect here to keep in mind. I do believe, had this Pokemon had U-Turn, it would have gone in some really strong layers behind it. The only thing that makes this Pokemon very viable and scary is it has two ways of setting up, and it has a potential move pool to work well. His physical uh, side of things are good, and um, for example, Fake Out uh, are great to get with Quick Attack to get two tiles of priority to kind of ship your opponent down to get with, of course, the likes of Plasma Fist, and just Throat Shop, Knock Off, you know, all those stuff. It works in Tantrum with Serora, um, and it is a speedy Pokemon. It's the speedy Pokemon. It, it, it very few Pokemon have speediest Pokemon. Uh, it's had Pokemon so many times in just a few seconds. Anyway. <laughs> So that's probably its biggest merits as a Pokemon, because uh, it's, it's one of the few League Pokes I know that could go Adamant or Modest and still have speed 120 base mods. That's that's a massive, massive perk. Um, it does, it does not speak or Ninja, which is like one of the key things you want to do, so it, it is a time for to be jolly or timid. But as a whole, Serahora stands out. It's hard switch into. Plasma Fist is quite ferocious, and it is easy to patch up for ground types anyway. It's not like if you lack in a power ice, or you know you haven't, of course, don't have ice ice punch that you can always kind of get out of there. It just is real unfortunate that you can't predict that right and go for U-turn. It means you always be a step behind at times. But Serora is a very strong, individually strong Pokemon, and it works well with other teams due to, of course, its ability to get a wit 
a really really strong speed here. So yeah, it's absolutely one of the strangest and toughest Pokemon to deal with in a league concept and it has a lot to do with that his extra damage output comes in not being forced to be as speedy as he can be and go plus nature in his offensive stats. So that's the mount and yeah, it goes without saying. Electavara is move pool wise ridiculously a lot better than Zeraora. It just has a depth to it that makes it really, really good. Um, the speeder is holding it back and it's holding it back really, really, really by a lot. I mean, there basically are 50 points base between Zeraora and Electavara. And what does that mean? It means in theory that Zeraora can be physically stronger than Electavara due to Go Gorma plus nature. Uh, it's really as simple as that. And there are matchups Zeraora is faster in in a lot of the times, unless, of course, Lectorar can't rule out speed unless it's scoffed, and of course it's already scoffed, and you know, it's, it's no competition, of course it isn't. So, while Electavar is a fantastic Pokemon in League concept due to its viability and broad movable to deal with a lot of match Aquarite, Zeraora is, of course, better here, there is no contest. That said, though, if you optimize for getting Electavar for your League team, it's, it should be absolutely considered. Um, it is, I do, don't believe it's untiered or, you know, as low as CU uh, define its real viability in League because as stated, having multiple layers of doing multiple things in a game is something highly valued in those kind of environment. Meta-wise, it falls behind here and has a lot to do with what I would say the standard sets that beat Electavar. It does it naturally because Electavar doesn't excel in anything, it's above average in most things. Zeror has things I would say it's absolutely the best at. Um, it is the strongest physical electric type and it does that really well. Most of the Pokemon that deal with electric type are especially offensive. This forces a different place versus their aura because it can go mixed also but Plasma Fist is usually and often the best to go about. And of course most of those sponges in um, for example OU even uh, are likes of Shansi do not want to take a close combat. It is one of those very ca rare cases where while his lackluster move pool really isn't significant to it mainly because it has way of dealing with the worst aspect and it does the quite right. And Zeroar simply due to speed is a Pokemon that hits hard very fast and often isn't hit. Electavar hits hard, it's forced like a hit and lacks the bulk to pull that off. Um, it does it does do things well, it just Sarah Aura is on a different level since it's a hit in the first place and that's why I win this matchup. So, with that said, what do you guys think? Do you guys have a fun story about like Tavara or Sarah Aura to make them just shine in battle? I really want to hear you guys out. I just think I covered like the gist about things and trying to hype up like Tavara because it really is, let's say it here, it's a really interesting Pokemon. Just it is an unfair matchup with Sarah Aura just playing a different category as a whole. So that's it for watching as always and I'll see you all see me. See you all see me. Just me. Next week with this matchup.